Greetings to all and welcome to this video on how to check that everything is fine in your database objects. So we assume that you have this screen, you are logged in in Apex, Oracle Apex. We can now go to SQL Workshop to check our objects. Let me click on Object Browser. Once I am in Object Browser, I can check my tables. Remember the design of my tables is this one. If we start by the table courses, there is really nothing condition, no condition except for the attributes. Let's quickly see the attribute of the table courses. It has how many attributes? It has one, two, three, four, five attributes. So we can double check one, two, three, four, five attribute. CIE is the primary key. Is CIE defined as the primary key? We can see it in the constraints. And in the constraint, you'll see the primary key. This is the type of constraint. And it's saying CIE is the primary key. What else is also saying in the courses? It is also saying that the code and the title are unique. You can see it here in the constraint. It's saying that the unique constraint must be applied to the code and to the title. So it looks like we are fine for the table course. Now let's look at the table person. In the table person, we need to have one, two, three, four, five attributes also and in this case the username must be unique let's go and check that that is the case we go to the table persons in the table persons yes it's turning we are in the table persons and what are our constraints we can see that there is a primary key which is person id how many attributes? We can quickly check the number of attributes. When we go one, two, three, four, five, all the attributes are there. Let's further look at the constraints. We were saying yes for that table. Person ID is the primary key, but the username must be unique. Let's go check if the username is unique. I am not seeing any unique here which means we did not create that constraint so we can now go and create the constraint saying that the username is unique we click on create and now what is the name of the constraint the name of the constraint person count and what type is it we are going to say unique is a unique and uh, which color which colon do we want to be unique? We want the colon username to be unique. And from there, I think we can go to next. Maybe we can say person cons unique constraint and go to next. From there, we can finish the constraint. The constraint has been created. You'll see it, a unique constraint. The username must be unique. If we carry on with the other table, what else should we check? For example, this one, the table admins has one, two, three, four, and then person ID must be a foreign key. Person admin let's go to admin for attributes person id admin we are in admin we can check on the tables one two three four attributes no problem let's look at the constraints now in the constraint we say the primary key is aid no problem apart from the primary key do we have the foreign key no person ID, we forgot to put it as a foreign key. So let's go and create that as a constraint. 
I can now go to constraint and add. Here is just the checks. I can add a foreign key constraint. I can call it admin foreign key. And then from there, I'm going to say it is a foreign key. Then select the colon. Yeah, on delete must be cascade. Which colon are we talking about? Is the person ID? Then after the person ID, which one are we referencing? We are referencing the table person. And also we want to match the person ID. So we have to select person ID and match it. And from here now that we have selected, we can now carry on next. Very, very good and finish the process. So we now have all our constraints, a primary key, a foreign key, and uh, some checks. Is there any unique for admin? No, the landline and they are not admin. Let's go and check. The last one for this presentation, the lecturers, a foreign key and a primary key. Let's go to the lecturers quickly. Foreign key and primary key for the lecturers. The lecturers, the constraint is saying we only have a primary key. So we'll have to create a foreign key for the lecturers. We call it foreign key. Key. And from there, we can then see the type of constraint is a foreign key. Which column do we want? For our is on delete cascade. We want person ID to be the foreign key, and we can push it. Referencing which table? Table uh, persons. And from here, we can now see person ID. And we have to go to next. The constraint has been created, a foreign key constraint, and we can finish. And once we are back, you will see that we now have a constraint of a primary key and a constraint of a foreign key. I think we are almost done with all the tables, but you can do them on your own. Did we do the... LICD and the uh, O. Oh, did we also have to do a unicity? Let's try to see if person ID is unique and person ID is also unique. I'm going to do admin. I'm going to make sure that person ID is unique in admin. I'm not seeing any unique. So I'm going to create a unique. And from there, I can now say you key and i'm going to say is a unique key and from here i'm going to select which colon i want the person id to be unique and i can go to next and finish the constraint and now you can see it here person id is unique I think you can do all the other tables to make sure that all your constraints are respected. The student number must be unique and uh, the person ID here must be unique. The person ID here must be unique. The other person ID here must be unique as well as the username. We thank you.